Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So hello friends, uh, welcome back. We were talking about turbulent premix flames and uh, we were discussing uh, various aspects of it, uh, various physical aspects of it. Uh, we discussed the regime diagrams and how by using simple scaling relationships we can identify different regimes of turbulent flames. In particular, uh, the most important are the corrugated flamelets and the thin reaction zone or the uh, uh, or the uh, thin reaction zone regimes uh, uh, or the reaction sheet regime as such. And uh, most of the uh, aerospace propulsion happens in between these two regimes. So there is some uh, can happen in the distributed uh, reacted uh, re distributed reaction uh, uh, zone regime also. Uh, anyways, now we were proceeding to develop basically the models that can describe uh, the propagation of the turbulent flame. And as you see uh, that uh, in the from the beginning video that we saw if you just uh, go back uh, uh, this this video that we saw that uh, that uh, uh, we could understand uh, it appears we can understand turbulent flame interaction by basically considering what happens on different isosurfaces inside the flame, isosurface of temperature inside the flame. Then the task would be to essentially describe the evolution of these isosurfaces under the impact of turbulence, okay, large scale turbulence to small scale turbulence. And for that we essentially went to describe you the G equation. We will just uh, take a revisit at it and uh, basically this is a uh, field equation, G equation is a field equation uh, where you can describe a G field everywhere inside the inside your domain and then you basically select one of those isosurfaces of that G field say that isosurface is given by G x t is equal to 0 as you see here okay and uh, that is uh, that essentially this uh, propagation and movement uh, and stretching and folding of this isosurface mimics essentially the, uh, the, 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 the dynamics of a turbulent flame surface. And we said that if G is less than or equal to 0 as a reactants, G greater than 0 as the products, then the local flame, uh, the local surface G must propagate with the local displacement flame speed. Whereas the displacement flame speed is of course the uh, rate of the propagation, the propagation rate of the surface with respect to the local fluid velocity. And this uh, uh, propagation happens along the, uh, uh, along the Mm, uh, local surface normal uh, uh, which is normal to the surface mm, and then uh, whereas this normal is given by the uh, uh, is given by this expression can be found out from the G field itself which is given by minus of gradient of G divided by mod of grad G. And then this is the representation the cartoon representing the G field okay. So, but then we could derive this and the final G equation was given like this okay dg dt partial dg partial dt plus uh, u dot gradient uh, u dot um, u vector dot divergence over the acting on the uh, g field and that is equal to sd times mod of grad g. Of course, this is a nonlinear uh, term uh, because this can, this can be essentially written as square root of grad g dot grad g uh, and that is where the nonlinearity comes from of this equation. Then there are specific methods, it cannot be directly solved by um, normal uh, 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 central differencing or uh, normal finite differencing methods and uh, there are special methods available for doing this thing for solving the G equation that you that is not um, we will not discuss here. But then one needs to find an appropriate model for SD also that is a local displacement flame speed. How will you find that because that is a that goes into the input uh, that is an input into the G equation model right into the G equation. So, uh, that can be given as a function of the local uh, stretch rate, the local str uh, tangential strain rate which is AT and local curvature and this is the um, this is an expression that we can use. Uh, whereas, the curvature can this this curvature uh, can be obtained from the geometry of the surface once again this this curvature essentially is the divergence of the normal vector. Uh, so, uh, once again if you know the normal vector which is uh, the which is which we have given as minus of grad G divided by mod of grad G. Okay, so, from that you can find this out and AT comes from the by projecting the local strain rate into the tangential direction which also you can find out from the, the tangential direction you can find out from the local geometry of the flame surface which is given by the field G. 
So this, uh, so this is how the local property, the local geometry of the surface, and local uh, flow properties are essentially uh, are captured into the into the propagation speed itself also. So whereas of course the to the first order the propagation speed depends on the planar laminar flame speed, and then what we see here is that the local uh, curvature and the local tangential strain rates can cause deviation from the planar laminar flame speed, but that needs to be accounted for in the model for the local propagation speed that goes into the G equation. Okay. Now, uh, of course, uh, another thing is that this is varied in the weak stretch limits, uh, but uh, yeah, we can use that uh, with certain um, constraints as long as the stretching rate is not too high. So this works well in the in the in the uh, corrugated flame led regimes where the turbulence is not too strong. But uh, people have done some extrapolations into the thin reaction zone regime also. Okay. So, uh, of course, uh, as you see that the SD models get involved uh, in the thin reaction zone regime or the uh, reaction sheet uh, regime. Now, how do you use this for turbulence? Okay. Now, as you know, the biggest problem of turbulent combustion or turbulent uh, or modeling turbulent flows is that your uh, eta that is the Kolmogorov length scale by the integral length scale scales as Reynolds number to the power of minus 3 by 4 right. So, as the Reynolds number goes big the eta L0 ratio becomes smaller and smaller right. So, whereas the thing is that suppose you are solving an engine okay, uh, which is a domain which is uh, the largest length scale is say 6 times L0 that is the integral length scale. So, but if the Reynolds number is very large say of the order of 50,000 your eta will be extremely small okay, very very small of the order of few microns. So, the problem is that then you need to grade basically from all the way from the 6 time of L0 which can be of the order of a uh, uh, of which can be of the order of say uh, hundreds of centimeters to this uh, few uh, to this length scale of few microns. So, your largest domain size has to be of the order of few say 100 centimeter and your smallest length scale in your mesh if you want to do by CFD it has to the grid size has to, of the, of the, has to be of the order of few microns right. So, that is the problem I mean that is why we cannot solve the what happens inside the engine using just uh, just by solving all the continuity um, momentum uh, temperature um, uh, uh, species equations as well as the constitutive, constitutive relations as is and that is why we need to seek models which describe their mean propagation mean mean uh, properties or their filter properties as is done in uh, LES larger simulation. Okay. So, uh, that is that is the thing. Um, so, uh, similarly th that is why we went to do the RANS uh, thing RANS model where you do not need uh, so fine grades because you are only interested in the evolution of the average quantities. Okay. So, uh, whereas uh, in the as I said in the LES you are only interested in the evolution of the filtered quantities. Now, those are not the instantaneous quantities. So, you lose some in knowledge of the what happens instantane instantaneously, but then we are more interested in the averaged statistical behavior of an engine rather than what exactly happens in the different instance. So, uh, the if, but the problem as you have seen that that poses us a closure model. Uh, closure problem whereas uh, this uh, there are closure problems at different stages for example you have seen that um, there is a closure problem in the in the uh, Reynolds stress terms there is closure problem in the turbulent scalar flux terms uh, there is closure problem in the mean reaction rate terms so there are closure problem at different stages so same thing happens in a turbulent premise combustion also so, uh, if you have this even if you have this exact equation for the propagation rate of the uh, flame uh, surface which is governed by say G even if we assume that uh, that this G equation can describe the propagation of the flame surface exactly. Uh, but then uh, that is if you have a very good model for U uh, and you can account in for density variation somehow in the flow field. Uh, but uh, given given that your G field if you have a if you have a turbulent flame uh, this turbulent flame will be wrinkled at multitude of length scales right. So, you basically need to even if you solve this G equation you need to solve for this largest length scale which is again of the order of 6 times L0 approximately right um, because your integral length scale is 1 sixth of the domain size and your smaller scales will be also uh, fluctuation will be once again of the order of eta or the flame thickness which are very smaller uh, something like that. So, uh, your computational requirement still is very huge right. So, what, what people try to do is that people try to solve for an averaged uh, G field that is you do not average exactly over the G field that is not really done, but you just try to describe an equi uh, so uh, uh, let me just uh, draw this once again. 
So, the idea is that that suppose this is your domain and this is your statistically one dimensional turbulent flame speed which is wrinkled at multitude of length scales and you do not uh, you do not have the uh, have the um, resource to solve uh, such a huge um, uh, mesh well, of, and another thing of course is that um, even though this scale separation is is eta by L 0 grows to the power of Reynolds number to the power of 3 by 4 when it comes to mesh it becomes it is it is always a 3D mesh in turbulence because turbulence is essentially 3D. So, the scale separation essentially gets um, not uh, it, it grows to the power it, it grows in a cubic manner ok because your smallest scales has to be of the order of delta. Uh, so, whereas your largest scales is of the order of uh, your smallest scales is of the order of eta and your largest scales is of the order of 6 times L 0. So, if you have to re reduce your um, uh, scale uh, your smallest scale by 10 times ok. So, your eta now is essentially your, your delta is essentially one tenth of the previous delta. So, what happens is that your uh, your actual grid size or the number of grid points increases by uh, 10 to the power 3 not just by 10 because it is uh, if you assume it is a cubic uh, domain ok uh, of the order of that depending on the domain size or dom domain shape of course, but it grows in a cubic manner. So, that produces immense computational load which is really not possible even. Uh, so, the current gas turbine combustor if you want to solve it by direct numerical simulation where you will uh, simulate all the way from the large scales to the small scales that is simply not possible. So, you need to use models that is why we have industry essentially uses RANS models and some uh, uh, there are also um, LES is also emerging as one of the possible um, models to basically um, simulate turbulent combustion in practical uh, engines ok. So, one of this uh, uh, model that was uh, proposed by Karpov, Lipatnikov, and Zimont about uh, uh, 20 years ago was this um, uh, say the mean uh, uh, flame surface propagation. So, this is not the average, but what it shows tries to say is that say I will not my I do not have the resolution to grid resolution to basically simulate all these small scales. So, what I will do is that I will have a mean uh, flame surface uh, which is uh, which can be considered to be essentially the average location of all these instantaneous flame surfaces. So, on average of course, you see that um, this this flame surface will uh, fluctuate around this this mean. So, this mean is essentially given by G m uh, is equal to say uh, say um, this is another of course, a different function which is say given by uh, G 0 whereas, uh, this thing is equal to the instantaneous which is given by G which is given by 0. So, uh, or, or this can be also given by uh, G 0 uh, also given by 0 actually ok. So, uh, this is this is the propagation uh, of the of this uh, um, uh, G m which is the um, which is supposedly the the, uh, uh, the flame uh, the surface which is uh, averaged uh, over all possible um, uh, locations uh, of the uh, instantaneous um, uh, flame uh, uh, surface ok. So, uh, this this is the essentially the mean uh, flame surface uh, model and uh, of course, uh, now you have a uh, Favre which is essentially propagating as a result of two things. Mm, it is now propagating due to uh, the mean flow ok which is u i uh, averaged Favre average and then the it itself propagates with a instead of the instantaneous and local displacement flame speed it pro this thing propagates with a uh, this thing propagates with a um, uh, uh, with a um, uh, mean uh, 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 propagation velocity which will emerge to be essentially turbulent flame speed in the as you will see later so uh, so uh, this is the this was my uh, this was what my uh, domain was and this is the instantaneous flame surface ok and this is the mean flame surface which has to be straight because it is statistically planar and uh, so it now behaves almost like a one statistically planar uh, planar 1D 
flame, but of course, its structure is very much different from the 1D flame because it is essentially averaged. For example, well, how why it should be different is that uh, it, you will see that there are two major points of difference. And number one, this thickness of the flame will be much thicker, thickness of this average flame will be much thicker than the instantaneous flame and two, it will propagate much faster um, because as in instantaneously as its surface area is much bigger than the planar laminar surface area. Okay, mm, uh, it will essentially consume a lot more of the fuel air mixture than a planar laminar flame can consume and as a result the resultant velocity or the resultant speed with which it will move is given by this turbulent flame speed and it will be much much greater than the planar laminar flame speed. Okay. So, this is the, uh, the thing. So, now we need to understand basically this um, concept called ST. Now, if uh, in a planar laminar flame or in laminar flames the most important property is laminar flame speed for a turbulent flame or a turbulent premix flame the most important property is the turbulent uh, flame speed. So, what is it and what, how does it behave? So, this is a very important uh, topic of research that has been for the last uh, several decades and it is still kind of an um, unclosed problem, but we need to understand this because turbulent flame speed is what, what governs the propagation, stabilization or any such um, dynamic behavior of a turbulent uh, premix flame. Okay. So, turbulent burning velocity, uh, it uh, the research of turbulent burning velocity essentially originates from uh, the works of Damkoller who suggested two limiting cases and um, one is the wrinkled uh, flamelet regime and another is the uh, th another works in the thin reaction zone regime which are the two regimes that we have seen. Okay. So, the uh, the, the turbulent uh, flame um, uh, essentially uh, the turbulent uh, propagation uh, 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 modes are fundamentally different in the two limiting cases. Okay. The, when the turbulent scales are larger than the flame thickness that is in the corrugated flamelet regimes or the wrinkle flamelet regime um, where there is no disturbance on the preheat zone structure by the turbulent eddies then just turbulence increases the flame surface area by due to tangential straining uh, without essentially distorting or disturbing the inner flame structure. But when turbulent scales are smaller than the flame thickness then turbulent can modify the transport processes also because you see essentially turbulence has a very strong diffusive character okay whereas uh, but it says that that diffusion arises essentially due to the uh, convection and the uh, essentially due to the convective terms and due to the Reynolds stress terms uh, which are essentially uh, very much responsible for the diffusive nature of turbulence okay because of the turbulent fluctuations but uh, uh, you see that uh, in a laminar flame essentially the both the diffusive molecular diffusion processes as well as reaction are very very important. If you remember your uh, flame speed was essentially the geometric mean of the, um, of the reaction rate and the uh, diffusivity the thermal diffusivity right. So, now if you have very strong turbulent diffusivity which essentially overrides your thermal diffusivity or molecular diffusivity then this turbulent flames this turbulent diffusivity can uh, uh, become an equally important or even more important parameter than the turbulent diffusivity than the molecular diffusivity in this uh, in this propagation rate or this global propagation behavior of the turbulent flames. So, in the preheat zone structure if this is the if this is now the distorted uh, uh, of uh, preheat zone uh, uh, distorted uh, uh, flame shape whereas, uh, in the thin reaction zone regime uh, like this let, let me just uh, draw it. Uh, so, this is this is the preheat zone structure. So, where now you have eddies of different sizes uh, distorting it then these eddies will essentially create can create uh, turbulent um, uh, diffusion inside the flame uh, structure. Okay. So, uh, that is uh, that is uh, that is one possibility of course, when you look into this in a in a statistical way that is if you can now uh, mm, if you now think that uh, mm, your your flame is has a has a your you can essentially convert this entire different uh, flame structures into essentially a statistical 1D structure then also you will see that this uh, this turbulent diffusion will play a major role in. Um, in essentially uh, um, essentially controlling the diffusive processes in this inside this preheat zone of this uh, turbulent premix flame. So, when uh, what we want to say is that that when the it is a corrugated flame let us regime that uh, the turbulence scales are much larger than the flame thickness then turbulence only increases the flame surface area. Whereas, if the turbulence scales are far smaller than the flame thickness that is in the, the thin reaction zone regime the reaction to regime then can tur turbulence can modify the transport process also. 
So, in this one we just only need to calculate uh, the, the, uh, the, the increased uh, flame surface area whereas, in this one we might need to even calculate the, um, the, 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 the enhanced diffusion processes that happens inside uh, the turbulent flame structure. Okay. So, uh, in the wrinkle flame rate regime that A t if we consider that the A t is the instantaneous flame area whereas, A is the projected area okay. that is what I mean is that uh, the say the if you have a flame like this um, okay. so this is in three dimensions of course uh, 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 the flame will be uh, will be 3 d's and then this increased area. So, now you just have an increased curve length over the planar laminar flame which was a uh, which was a planar. Um, so, this this is the this is the laminar flame which is say uh, which had an area of say A l. Uh, say it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a, it's a uh, cubic uh, cuboid uh, b b b channel uh, in which the flame is propagating. Okay, so uh, then this uh, this this uh, wrinkled area is this has the surface area eighty. Of course, a wrinkled surface area and a given in the same um, cross section will have much more area than the than the planar area. So, this wrinkled area has, in, has a surface area of 80 whereas, the planar laminar area A l or the projected area has an area A or has an area A only. So, uh, then uh, we uh, can uh, uh, what we can do is that uh, we can find out the relationship between uh, S t and A s l and uh, as a function of A t and A. So, what we can say is that let us consider this uh, well this this uh, this uh, is to be a cuboid in which um, um, in which this uh, in which this uh, this turbulent flame as you see here um, is uh, is uh, uh, stabilized it is statistically stationary at this location that means it is essentially fluctuating about this um, uh, constant uh, um, uh, about this about this uh, 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 about this uh, line a okay line or area uh, area a so, for this as we uh, if you remember that for a laminar flame to be stabilized or stationary at a particular location it must the reactants must enter into it at a velocity which is given by the planar laminar flame speed S l. So, by the same argument to keep this um, flame this turbulent premix flames stationary at this particular point the average velocity with which the reactants must enter into the flame is S t. Okay. That is in the other way that if you allow this to be free, if you allow this to be a freely propagating flame on average this flame will move to the to the reactants will pro 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 the average propagation rate of this flame into the reactants will be equal to S t. Okay. So, S t is essentially a kind of a uh, you will see that it is a um, uh, average propagation rate of the turbulent flames of the of the of the of the turbulent flame okay so uh, now to compute that in terms of the area what it will be is can be found out from here that is uh, um, that is if i say that let's compare the mass fluxes so the mass flux then uh, if this if this flame is stationary then the rate at which the the mass flow rate into the flame surface okay the mass flow rate into the flame surface is given by rho u times local S l I consider the local flame speed to be essentially constant times A t whereas, this is the flame surface area. Now, this is the mass flow rate into the flame surface okay. and uh, now if of course, uh, that is that is this is the mass flow rate that is going into the flame surface and of course, this uh, mm, uh, this is coming from the uh, 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 the upstream mass flow rate and if that has to be um, uh, then the, the, the mass flow rate is being fed uh, at a velocity at a, at a speed which is equal to the, the turbulent flame speed uh, and uh, this uh, because the flame is essentially statistically stationary. So, then we can equate this to rho u times S t times A. Okay. And uh, so, then uh, my S t by S l essentially becomes A t by A. Okay. So, this is the uh, reason why our S t must be greater than S l because your A t is much greater than A. Okay. So, uh, once again uh, to clarify uh, that uh, 
so the, the, the rate uh, this is essentially the rate at which uh, this uh, mass is being uh, uh, is being consumed uh, this this m dot is the rate at which the mass is being consumed in this uh, wrinkled over the entire wrinkled flame surface okay and now of course uh, the the appropriate velocity locally with which this mass flow rate is going in is essentially sl which is the relative velocity between the flame uh, local flame motion with respect to the local fluid velocity and that is why sl comes in so then we can equate it to an average speed with which the mass is must be fed uh, for the play, for the uh, for the uh, flame to be essentially uh, stationary and that is uh, given by uh, essentially um, st so it's uh, so we get that m dot is equal to rho u times sl times at and uh, uh, with which the mass is being fed into this um, into this thing and uh, then um, uh, then this uh, we can equate that to essentially rho u times st times a and uh, our uh, uh, then st by uh, whereas st is the local uh, is is a global propagation rate of the flame surface or if this is statistically stationary it is the rate at which the mass uh, this fuel reactants is of a speed at which this fuel reactant is approaching the flame surface uh, the overall uh, uh, flame surface mm, uh, and uh, then this is given by st and then st by sl is essentially equal to at by a okay so then uh, since the turbulence uh, increases the area at is greater than a which crosses st greater than sl okay now in the weak uh, turbulence limit it can be shown that um, uh, that for uh, this st by sl is essentially square root over 1 plus u, pri u prime by sl uh, square but this is only true when u prime by sl is much much less than 1 so this is uh, true only in a very weak turbulence limit and this is not of very much practical uh, impo into importance because uh, we don't have situations in a practical engine which is weak turbulence weakly turbulence we have situations in uh, in a standard engine which is strongly turbulent okay now we uh, go into a more formal uh, discussion and uh, uh, and and uh, methods by which the turbulent burning velocity of the turbulent flame speed st can be obtained because as you see that st comes into the model for the g equation to describe the average propagation speed average, average propagation of the uh, the propagation rate of the average of the mean surface mm, and it, it it is used in different turbulent uh, flame speed uh, models for validation also so just like uh, laminar flame speed is an important uh, parameter for uh, laminar flames turbulent flame speed is also a very very important parameter for turbulent uh, burning velocity but there are problems which we will see the turbulent flame speed can be defined as a propagation rate of the mean flame surface with respect to the unburned gas and average rate of mixture converted into conversion into products so that was our st okay this is what we uh, uh, described as st and it is uh, uh, essentially uh, it's still uh, kind of uh, we still do not understand turbulent flame speed completely and peters describes in his book uh, as that this is one of the most important unresolved problems in premise turbulent combustion um, is determining the turbulent burning velocity and if st is turbulent flame speed sl is laminar flame planar laminar flame speed u prime 0 is rms of fluctuating velocity integral length scale ln laminar flame thickness then we want an, to seek a solution of st by sl as a function of u prime sl l0 l that is uh, if you have a turbulent flow which is completely defined by u rms and uh, integral length scale and of course other properties the fluid properties are given and you have a, a fuel air mixture uh, by which you uh, where your um, where your uh, uh, flame speed and flame thickness are uh, known for the laminar planar laminar flame then can you with this parameters can you determine the turbulent flame speed as a function of the laminar flame speed okay now there has been uh, of course people have tried to seek this and uh, there has been numerous experiments and there's numerous uh, model, models and computations but still this remains um, uh, a little bit unresolved and the, we need to do more research on this and that is why i'll give you uh, some glimpse of what has been done okay so uh, in the thin reaction zone regime uh, we have a very interesting uh, idea from Damkuller. he said that you know um, for a planar laminar flame the planar laminar flame can be written as it is of course a unit of meter per second 
and your um, of course a planar laminar flame um, uh, has meters of units uh, meters per second and uh, the, the diffusivity when Lewis number equal to 1 has an unit of uh, meter per second square and uh, your time scale of the flame crossing time is essentially uh, uh, seconds. So, um, uh, what we can do is that we can write uh, this uh, uh, this or, the, or this is a chemical time in terms of second. So, you know, we can write this uh, SL um, of course, we know that we have written SL as essentially D times omega uh, whereas, um, D is the diffusivity and omega is the reaction rate. Okay, and uh, now um, uh, we just want to write this omega in terms of a time scale. So, instead of a reaction rate, we just write a chemical time scale which is in units of second. So, then the by scaling argument, we can write SL is essentially equal to D by tau C that is a thermal diffusivity by a chemical time. Okay. Uh, or we can write it as SL is equal to root of R um, D times omega B also. Okay. Now, uh, then uh, what uh, he says uh, then, then by analogy in the turbulent for the turbulent flames within the thin reaction zone, well, he is saying that uh, Damkulor is saying that your uh, now your diffusivity is not just thermal diffusivity or mo which is governed by molecular processes anymore. Now, this diffusivity that you have here must be replaced with turbulent diffusivity. So, what if we just replace turbulent diffusivity in the similar way and keeping the chemical time scale to be same or we can write this as essentially root of our uh, dt times omega b 0 that is the local reaction rate remains unchanged. So, then we can write S t by S l is essentially equal to square root of d t which is the turbulent diffusivity by d. What is turbulent diffusivity? Turbulent diffusivity is if you remember that uh, by the gradient transport assumption your u prime c prime average right this prime uh, c prime uh, this one is equal to minus d t times uh, d c d x um, uh, that was uh, what we wrote. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, where a c was any 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 species. So, this is the gradient transport assumption that we could write and um, hence uh, uh, by that uh, that is how the turbulent diffusivity essentially originates and hence uh, if you now uh, uh, we have to find out what is a suitable expression for d t. Now, since d t is given by uh, has an unit of once again of meter per second square. We can write it in terms of the large scale turbulent parameters as u prime times L 0. So, this is meter per second, this is meter. So, it is essentially meter square per second uh, mm, uh, essentially um, mm, meter square per second and we write of course, d is equal to L L uh, which is the the which is S L uh, times uh, uh, L L uh, which is the local laminar flame speed times the flame thickness. So, then S T by S L mm, we essentially get is u prime 0 by L 0 divided by S L times L L. Okay. And this is nothing uh, and as you know that if we say Schmidt number equal to 1, uh, this S L times L L becomes essentially can be written as equal to D which is equal to the kinem uh, kinematic viscosity. So, then this S, S T by um, S L uh, becomes essentially. Um, uh, uh, so, uh, we can write S L times L L is equal to D is equal to nu. So, then S T by S L is becomes essentially equal to Reynolds uh, essentially becomes equal to Reynolds number to the power of half. Okay. So, S T by S L should be equal to uh, then, uh, then Reynolds number to the power of half. So, this way we can uh, have a scaling relationship for uh, turbulent burning velocity. So, uh, this is uh, uh, important thing. Okay. Now, why is this so important for gas turbine combustors? Because as you have seen that from this definition itself, the turbulent flame speed is can be defined as the propagation rate of the mean flame surface with respect to the uh, unburned gas or average rate of mixture conversion into products. Okay. This is one is the essentially a displacement turbulent burning velocity, another is a consumption turbulent burning velocity. And um, so, this turbulent burning velocity is a global in units of meters per second, it is it gives you an idea about what is the global consumption rate of the fresh mi mixtures. Okay, just like the uh, planar laminar flames, it gives you an idea about how the mixture is being consumed um, uh, 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 across the flame in units of meters per second. So, turbulent flame speed gives you two things. It gives you an idea of the how the mixture is being consumed, how fast, and B, and uh, consequently, it also tells you how fast uh, turbulent flame speed can propagate, or reversely that to stabilize to statistically make a flame stationary, what is the maximum velocity with which you can feed in fresh fuel air uh, mixture. 
So, that essentially governs your combustor um, entry uh, entry uh, uh, speed. Okay. In typical combustor your entry speed is of the order of 40 meters per second. Okay. Of course, you have some aerodynamic means to stabilize, but this is far 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 larger than 40 50 meters per second even more it can be 100 meters per second, but which is far far higher than the laminar flame speed okay, which is of the order of say uh, 30 centimeters per second. Whereas, you are stabilizing a flame as 100 meters per second. Of course, you do aerodynamic means we create local low velocity regions etcetera but still this flame should not have been able to stabilize if there was no turbulence. Okay. So, turbulent flame speed determines the total consumption of uh, premix reactions and govern the mean location and global stabilization of the flame. So, in this engine even in a, in a, in a TAPS combustor which is a uh, which is a uh, uh, which is this um, which is a flame like this uh, uh, in, a, in a TAPS combustor if you have to stabilize the flame you have to know what is the turbulent flame speed so as to design this engine properly. Okay. So, similarly um, if you have to uh, stabilize this uh, this uh, lean premix flame in this uh, uh, low soil burner, uh, one needs to know the turbulent uh, flame speed uh, because this turbulent this flame is being stabilized because the average velocity is equal to the turbulent flame speed of this flame. So, that is why it is important to know uh, the, uh, the turbulent flame speed and next uh, we will take up um, essentially the methods to analyze turbulent flame speed. Now, one can do some analytical derivation and uh, uh, which we did and we took up the G equation and did uh, uh, took the spectral approach and which will not go into details. And uh, this expression of turbulent flame speed in terms of the G field um, comes from Kirsten and Schusten Williams uh, where he takes uh, essentially an infinite uh, really long cuboid and uh, which is uh, filled up with different of the surfaces. So, he can he shows that this ST 0 by SL um, which is the turbulent flame speed of a of a statistically planar flame which is stabilized um, which is stationary inside this um, statistically stationary inside this cuboid. Um, and then he showed that um, then that is given by the Mm, the 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 volumetric average of this of the gradient of the the mod of the gradient of the G field, okay. So uh, and then uh, using those one can arrive at a expression which is similar to that of Dom color but not exactly same. One can introduce this uh, this uh, stretch limb uh, stretch effects and then ST by SL is given by one by Maxton uh, number uh, which is the ratio of your Maxton length. Mm, if you remember that the mass this is the Maxton length uh, which comes. So the Maxton number here is essentially your ratio of your marketing length to the flame thickness. Okay, so then this um, uh, is given by uh, for positive Maxton number of uh, fuel air mixtures. Then the ST by SL is given by one by Maxton number times U prime by uh, URMS by flame planar laminar flame speed times integral length scale by the planar thickness, planar flame thickness whole to the power of half. Okay, and then. Uh, uh, we'll show you some experiments in the next um, 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 uh, lecture to basically show that uh, how one obtains this turbulent flame speeds uh, using using um, yeah, laboratory experiments and how well does they fit into different kind of scaling laws and how one can um, basically have uh, uh, good scaling loss for different kinds of uh, for different turbulent flame speeds in different configurations as well as for different fuel air mixtures over different ranges of pressure and URMS conditions. So thank you.